Hello and welcome back to Master Gardening. I'm your host, Bud Kwok. We're here today inside. The local weatherman said it's supposed to be 15 degrees outside, but it's about 60, so we planned an inside thing and we're gonna go with it today. We're gonna do three different kinds of candles today. And this is a byproduct of agriculture. This is bees, bee wax only. That's the only kind of candle there is. Uh, we're gonna make sheet, sheet candles. We're gonna make dip candles show how to make dip candles and we're going to make some uh, uh, mold candles which these are my favorite. First of all this is all organic most of it came from my bees hives. The poor little bees they, all, they gather the honey and this is where most people get their beeswax. They gather the honey they put it in these little cells inside the hives and this is not one that they would normally do. It would be a nice clean one and really light colored. The, this is one that they, they use for their growing their young. But anyhow, they put the honey in the, in the little cells. They wait for it to cure, which means it evaporates until it's a certain thickness. When it's just perfect, they seal it with little caps that go over top of these little holes. And it's sealed forever until the beekeeper comes along and he wants to get that out of there. So in order to get it out, he's going to have to cut the caps off. You take a, a hot knife like this, similar to this, or if you've got a bigger operation, it's come some kind of automatic deal, but believe it or not, a lot of your beekeepers still use this knife. You just slightly slice the tops of those caps off. That way the honey's exposed and you can get it out in a centrifuge type thing to get the honey out. We won't go into that, it's another show. We can have another show like that, Tammy. That's a good, that's a good one, I just had a good idea. But those caps fall into a container the honey that comes out with it, there's a lot of honey, it drains out to the bottom and you can use that honey to, just like any other honey, it's just as good. But those caps and that some of the honey are stuck together and it's like maple syrup and, and, um, and oatmeal mixed together. You stick that in a porcelain pot, put it in a microwave, melt it till it's completely melted down. The honey goes to the top, I mean sorry, the honey goes to the bottom, the wax goes to the top and the pollen's in the middle. Let it cool off harden and then you can pop that wax off the top. There's some pollen underneath there. Pop that wax off, you can use that honey in there. It's been uh, uh, browned up by being in the microwave, it's a little bit darker and maybe you might not want to use it. I use it to, uh, to feed my bees. But that's what you get. Hopefully <laughs> thicker, thicker than that. This is a real small one. You remelt this again, it, it separates. The pollen will separate from the, from the wax you can pour the wax off and make your, make your candles. And if you notice that's got honey on it. That's, that's some stuff that's still sticky. And by the way, this is all my equipment and you got honey and wax on everything. Tammy found out the hard way a while ago. Okay, well now we got the wax and you can put it into molds and keep it stored like this or this, you can buy it like this. If you don't have bees and just wanna make candles, you get a bee catalog and Better Bee is the one I use. Uh, it's got the best, as far as I know, candle supplies and candle making supplies in it in the back. If you can't come up with a catalog, just put Better Bee in your uh, special word in your, on your internet computer and hit go and it'll take you to Better Bee and they'll, oh there, there, <laughs> there went that one. Uh, <coughs> did you get that one? Okay. What's the first thing you're going to do when you make candles? You go out to your special library, or you can buy a book like I did, and, and read about how to make candles. Then you'll be an expert, just as an expert as I am. One book. Or if you want to <clears throat> sell candles, you can go on the internet and get books on how to sell candles. They've got everything today. Okay, say we bought some of this wax from uh, Better Bee. You can buy different colors. This is uh, bleached wax. So if you, if you did want to go ahead and make colors, <clears throat> you, you'd have to get the white because if you put color with the yellow beeswax, you don't know what in the heck color you're going to get. Like you put blue with that yellow, it's going to be green of some kind. So you get the white wax, it's bleached. It's still organic, but it's bleached. You may not like that. Or you can get the yellow, and that's what I do now. I just strictly the yellow. I don't use scents, I don't use colors. You'd be surprised, I sold a few candles and that's what the customers want. They want the organic beeswax, the other stuff and crap. Okay, we got the wax. Let me show you how to make tapered candles, and that's what these are right here. <laughs> We're not having any luck today. This table's just not quite big enough for all this stuff I've got. 
Thank you, Miss Tammy. Okay. You buy a rig like this, it costs about $50 in the catalog. This is for tapers. You tie the strings around these bars, you get the idea, back and forth. Okay, then you dip it, slowly dip it into this cauldron of wax. Okay, and then you pull it back, you put it in for 30 seconds, you pull it back out, put it in for 30 seconds, pull it back out. One thing that's I found hard about this type of making uh, candles is, you see how big that is? That'll take about five or six of, of these just to f melt and fill this up to get started. That's a lot of wax. To, uh, uh, it takes a long time to melt that kind of wax in order to keep it hot and, w and, and the right uh, consistency. You've got to keep this in a bath of hot water. It can't be right over a flame because if it does get too hot, it can explode on you. You have a, like a double boiler. Stick that in there. Okay, so you've gone to all that trouble. Then you're going to dip this down in there for 30 seconds, pull it back out, and you've got to wait for that to harden before you can dip it back in or else it'll melt again. This wax has to be exactly the right temperature. If it's too cold, you get lumps on your candles. If it's too hot, it'll melt the wax back off that you already had on your candles. So it's very complicated. I spent 12 hours on a Saturday and a Sunday and I made about three or four batches of candles, which was about a dozen candles was all I got out of it. So I quickly moved on to another type of candle, but that may be your bailiwick, okay? I moved on to the, the mold candles. You can make a batch of mold candles in about 30, 45 minutes. So it depends on how many molds you've got. It's a much quicker, much economical. If you're gonna go into the business and sell candles, this is the way to go. Okay, these these uh, molds are made out of a flexible rubber and I guarantee you that's the way, that's the way to go. You, you, you can get molds in almost any kind of shape or size. Uh, here's some votives right here. You can make votives out of these and the candles come out real easy. Uh, I, I had some metal uh, molds one time and the darn things when they got, I got them stuck in there and I tried to get them out. I put them in the freezer, did all these kind of things. I couldn't get them out. So guess what I had to do? I had to throw that expensive metal molds away. These, you'll never have that problem with these. Okay. I'm falling behind over here. We need to melt some of this wax. And all of my studies of uh, making candles, they've never used, mentioned the word microwave. So I'm gonna turn this microwave on. We're gonna take a little break. We'll be right back. We're gonna talk about more about making mold candles and we're gonna go into sheet candles, how to roll sheet candles. And you'll see in the catalog, these are $25 a piece in some of your catalogs. So we'll be right back. Oh, it's stuck. Oh, I stuck a pin in my finger. That's nice. Someday, I'll be a ballerina, just like them. This will be my stage, where I twirl and float and swirl for all the people looking at me. Someday, this won't just be my wish. Someday, I won't be sick. Okay, welcome back. We've got our wax heating in the microwave. Uh, it, I usually set it about six minutes, and then I wait for that to cool off a little bit, then three, three, and three, or two, until you, it's completely melted. Uh, wax is explodable, uh, so you gotta be careful. You just don't wanna be reckless with it. It's, re it's relatively safe as long as you just don't forget about it or, or just overdo it, okay? Okay, let's see what it looks like. That's, I don't know if you can see, you can't see that. Let me. It just needs a little bit more, and you can see it's just about, I could, I could start pouring that off the top there, but uh, it needs a little bit more. I'm going to stick it in there for three more minutes and see what, how that looks. Okay. 
Okay. And we decided that the dipping candles are beautiful and everybody loves them, but uh, they're a lot of trouble. I think I'd, better, I'd rather go ahead and, and buy those myself. These are what I like. They're, they're a lot more fun. That's, that's work. These, uh, these molds, like I said, are flexible. You can get them in any, in any size. This is a big square one right here. The biggest thing about these is, is threading the, the thread or the wick in the first time. And you can buy a, a wick for about $2. And I think there's some different kinds. But there's a little hole in the bottom of this. And you've got to find that hole. And you shove that up through there and thread the, the wick. The size of the wick is very important. The size of the wick is determined by the size or the diameter of the candle. So there's certain wicks for small tapers, others for big square candles. I guess everybody's bought one of those big, huge, round candles that's got like three wicks in it, and you start melting it, and it doesn't do where the crap. You gotta cut the edges off of it. It's, uh, it's, it's not worth it. It's just for show, really. They need about six wicks in those things. If you can get one with about six or seven wicks in it, it'll probably work fine. Okay. Back in the old days, uh, we had all different kinds of candles. We had whale blubber, we had uh, fish oil, all that stuff stunk and it put off smoke and all kind of whatever. The only candle that was really smokeless, smelled good, dripless, was the beeswax. But they were so expensive back in the old days, the only people could afford them were the, the Catholic Church. They used them in their ceremonies. They're the only ones that had enough money to buy the beeswax candles. Now, with all the beekeepers we have now, these are getting more and more reasonable. You look in a high-end catalog and these candles are going to cost you like $20, $25 for a big one or a pair of them or what have you, I can make these for about a dollar a piece. It takes a little bit of time, it takes 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes of my time. Okay, we're going to look at how I've got these threaded up. Kind of a little trick, you keep the, uh, the thread, thread like this so that uh, you, it's, it's, it's always threaded up. You don't have to thread it up each time. I'll pull this one out of here. I did this one last night at the extension office. Oh, I just stuck, in it. Ooh, I stuck a pin in my finger. That's nice. So if I can't rip that thing out of there. Pull that out, and it, the wick comes up through the bottom. No blood. That's why it's good. Cut that off like that. That looks just as pretty as this one, doesn't it, almost? Just had them tied together. Now that's a 12 inch. If you're going to do this yourself, you probably only need one mold for each kind. And I've got, I've got a columnar, I've got a rectangle one, I've got some different sizes. Some of these are 6 inch, 12 inch, 14 inch. You just need one of each. They're about $20 a piece, so you don't want to buy any extras. If you just had one of each size, you can, you can make hundreds of them with just that one, one uh, the wick. Well, that's stung. Here's the needle, stick that in the wick. If you can see that or not. You want to pull that tight, down tight, and then make sure that wick is in the center of that candle hole. If it's off the side, you won't get a good melt. Might get a little bit of a, a drip out of it. This is a very expensive release gin S19. It's you stick that you pour that in the ah, come on out of there. It's coming. That gets that's, that's released from here. I, I really don't think you need it with these type of molds, but this is not any better than Pam. You can get it at your grocery store. I paid like $10 for this the first time. I thought, well, I want to make sure I had it. So just get your Pam. You don't need that. Why do you need that? What? Why do you need it? Why do you have I didn't to say it, it releases the, the wax out of there. Um, thank you for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought I said it, but it, re it releases the wax candle from here easier. I just sh give it a little tug, but these things are so good because they're, they're flexible, you can pull it right out of there. Okay, let's see if our wax is, co wax is coming. Maybe one more shot probably before we're ready over here. Yeah, it's almost 100%. I'm going to give it about another, another minute. I don't think we'll be ready. I should know, but I don't. But it takes about 50,000 or 50 to 100,000 bees to travel another 120,000 miles to gather enough nectar and honey to make beeswax for one pound of, a, of beeswax. With one pound of beeswax, we'll make like three of these 
three of these candles. So it, about 50,000 bees spent their whole life gathering enough beeswax for three of these candles. Okay. All right. Like I said, I had different shapes. This is a shape that uh, it's got it's octagon. You can get octagon shapes. Let's see, I had one over here. Yeah, this has got a special little top on it and a special little bottom, depending on what you like. And uh, another good thing about beeswax candles, they can be, oh, that broke. <laughs> That's a good one. They can be bent like this, and all you have to do is heat it up a little bit, and, and it'll slowly bend back into shape if, if that's what you want. Okay, I don't see any here with that. Well, this one's a little bit, but sometimes you'll get a, uh, a, a kind of a white, flowery looking thing on the outside of your, of your candle. It's called, it's called sulfur. It's, uh, uh, it just bleeds to the top of the, of, the, uh, of the surface. It's just part of the candle's life. Some people really like that little white tinge to the outside. If you don't like it, just take your hand and rub it real good and it'll take that, that white tinge off of there. That wasn't a good example, but you'll, everybody that deals with beeswax candles know what I'm, knows what I'm talking about. Okay, our wax is ready. Our candle Mold's ready. As soon as we come back from a small break, we're going to pour us the candle. That's how easy it is. We'll see you in a few seconds. Well, I did the same thing last time, Tammy. It's backwards. <laughs> so many kids' activities today seem to leave out the activity part. New research tells us that just getting children to walk an extra 35 minutes a day could spare them the pain of thinning bones later in life. Encourage your kids to get up, get out, and get moving. Hello. Hey, Grandma, how about another grape soda? For more advice on how kids can build strong bones, visit aaos.org, a public service message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Okay, Tammy says not to make fun of the cameraman, but these trees are, you know, this is a gardening show. These, these trees, <coughs> you know, they got them at Trees and Trends or something, I don't know. Dan Shepard. You need a tree, bud. What, Tammy? You need a tree. I need a trees, yes. I don't know, though. It's <laughs> My master gardener friends are going to make fun of me, Tammy. Okay, we're back. Glove, glove, glove. Well, this, this is one of them discount gloves right here, but I'll tell you what, it works. Let's see what our wax is looking like. Yeah, mama. Yeah, mama. There it is. That's wax. That's beeswax. It hasn't been filtered as well as I've seen some that's almost clear, but this is, this is good stuff. It doesn't have any solids in there. It's ready to go. I can go ahead and I can probably make about uh, seven or eight or nine candles out of that over here. That one uh, thing will make, will fill all these things up if I had them empty and ready to go. But I'm lazy today. And we're just going to do one. This is the one right here where we, we emptied it up. And I'm going to do a double back flip here on this one. You, you can't screw up. You can make a mess. It just depends on how big a mess you want to make. And on the first couple, you're, what? Oh, I made a mess. <laughs> I was going to say, on the first couple, you're pretty good at it. After you've made about 100 candles, you really, your attention span is not as tight as it should be, and, and you make a mess. But I, I made a mess right off the bat. That wasn't too bad, though. Okay, that will shrink down in a little bit. Uh, paraffin candles will shrink down a lot, and you've got to keep putting more and more in. You can see on this one right here, it's shrunk down in a little bit, and I didn't fill it up. As that shrinks back down in, as it starts to harden, I'll, I'll put a little bit more and a little bit more in it. But that's okay. It can be, it's the bottom of the candle, and we're going to cut it off anyway. The difference between paraffin and beeswax. Paraffin uh, is a lot easier to work with, probably. Uh, it's a lot cheaper. It costs nearly nothing compared to beeswax. Uh, beeswax candles will not drip unless you have a wind blowing or uh, quite a bit of wind going. They do not drip. They smell great. They do not smoke one bit. And a paraffin, paraffin uh, will. Uh, for instance, here's the paraffin over here. Look what happened to it. Isn't that nice? <laughs> you won't get that with a uh, beeswax candle. Is that the stuff you put your hands in and 
pull it out, those women. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's, that's hot. The, the what now, though? You, know you stick your hand down in the wax and they pull it off. Is that the paraffin stuff? Oh, you, you could, yeah, you could do that. But you could do it with beeswax, too, but they don't because it's so expensive. And that's the cheap stuff. Is that where you use the cheap stuff? <laughs> okay. All right. You can't see it yet. We're, we're going to leave that just for a second. Uh, here's some votives. I've got a thing for votives too. You can make bunches of votives with a real quick and easy. They they get hard real quick. This will take like 30 minutes to, to 45 minutes to harden up where we can pull it out of there. Uh, if you've got it out in your garage and it's winter time, zero degrees outside, that's the best way to do it. And, and it'd probably take 15 minutes. These probably take about 10 or 15 minutes and you can pull those out. So you can just keep on more and more and more and making a bunch of those. Uh, these, uh, I had a customer that wanted to, uh, different can color candles. So I got into that a long time ago. These have been through quite a few presentations so they don't look too good, but I use them to show what it, this is blue. Believe it or not, this is blue. I want it to be blue. I put it with the yellow wax and that's what you get when you put blue with yellow wax. It's a green, dark green, which really is not that bad looking but you'd have to make sure you match it with your walls and your carpeting and all that stuff. So I don't do that anymore. I do a few whites, but this is what everybody wants. It's the true beeswax candles. Okay, I'm gonna get this hot stuff out of our way here so we don't get hurt. We're gonna get into our third type of beeswax candles. Now these are the ones that really kill me here. These are very, very expensive in the catalogs. And they, co they cost less than what the other, other ones do. And plus, you can make one in about 30 seconds. I'm not real good at this. If you did this very much, I think you'd get very good at it. These are sheets of beeswax. And you can get different uh, thicknesses. These are what's called uh, California beeswax. They, uh, that's red on red. That's not good, is it? <laughs> Let's try this one. This one broke a little bit. These things have been through the, the wars. This is real similar to what the beekeeper uses, but sometimes he has wires for, for reinforcement in through here. But this is what's called a California. It's a little bit thicker than, than normal, and it's, it's more forgiving to the, to the uh, beginner. If you make a mistake, you can unroll it and redo it, and it stays together quicker and doesn't fall apart. I've found that it's better to use the thinner because you can get a really uh, a tighter roll. And what I mean by tighter roll, we're gonna get started right now. I'm gonna cut me a little a little bit of uh, wick. And this is all there is to it. Now I could roll it this way. I could roll it the long way and make a real tall one. I could cut it in half and make smaller ones. I can, I can put two or three of them together and make it bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But let's go ahead and roll one of these real quick and then uh, we'll go from there. And I'll, I think you'll understand what I'm talking about. Forgot one little thing. This, 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 roll, this rolls up a lot better if it's, if it's been heated a little bit. Some people put them in their ovens even. We're not gonna heat this all the way, but I'm gonna heat it a little bit. Awful nice of Tammy to let us borrow her hair, hair dryer for this. Okay, the first thing you do is you put your wick down. That got pretty, we, we melted that pretty good. And you just want to smash it. Smash it down tight on top of that wick. Like I said, I'm not the world's greatest at this. If you did this very much, you'd be, it wouldn't take long for you to get really good at it. Okay, then the tighter you roll it, the, the longer it will it will take to, for it to burn. They say if you roll it tight enough, it'll burn just as long as a solid candle. Okay, once you get it going good, it's much easier. You want to keep the edge straight as you can. Like I said, once you get it going good, you can make these. You can really make these quick. Oops. There you are. How long did that take? Now the edge right here, this is, that's another reason why I think the thinner would be better. This, this really thin, the thinner would be make it an easier edge to smash down. You can take a hot knife and, and seal that down so it's less noticeable. 
But, and you can also, in the same way with these candles, all candles, if you want the bottom to be flat, keep an old skillet. As you're getting ready to throw away an old skillet, use it for just your candles. You heat it up and then you just take that and you just, on the skillet, you just wipe it across there until it melts down so it's perfectly flat. Do the same thing with this. Tammy, I'm going to give you this one. This is a pretty good one right here. Thanks. Okay. Now, say for instance, I wanted to make one that was tapered, similar to this one. Okay. All you got to do is, and this has got a bad spot in it anyway, measure down an inch here, get a straight edge, and I don't, I'm not going to take the time to make a straight edge. I'm going to go ahead and just eyeball it which I thought it started out real good, but I'm getting over an inch here, I think, now. Okay. And you, and you want to be sure and start on the short end. And this wick wants to curl up and it's not cooperating, giving Bud a hard time. And I'm not going to melt this. <laughs> Hold that down for me, Tammy. Can you all tell this is a team effort? Teamwork, teamwork, teamwork. I didn't melt at that time. But just give you an idea of how to do this. See, it's already cracking a little bit. If it was, if we had it warmed up a little bit, it'd be a lot better. Well, I did the same thing last time, Tammy. It's backwards. <laughs> I think you got the, you got the idea now. Okay, give me that. I'm going to go the other way. I did that same thing twice now. And I thought about it this time too. <laughs> but that's probably why I screwed it up. Smash that down good. And then roll it tight. Like I said, if you did this for a living, you'd probably do a lot better. Okay, that's pretty bad. <laughs> that's a bad one. <clears throat> Got a little bit of cold today. Okay, any questions, Tammy? No questions? You're kidding. Okay, well, I've, I've showed you how to make candles. Like I said, the key is to get you a good book. Okay, get you a, go online and get Better Be. And they'll have all, everything you know to mankind. I don't have one tenth of all the stuff they've got for you to, to make candles. And in a wintertime like this, uh, was I supposed to say it's wintertime or not? <laughs> it's supposed to be 15 degrees outside. I guess it's supposed to be winter. You can make your own candles for Christmas, Thanksgiving. We'll see you next time. This is Bud Quok, Master Gardening. Good gardening. Around here, Tammy D. Thompson. <laughs> <laughs>